I'm a neuroengineer, meaning I'm making new tools to study the brain. So you see this guy in the black and white picture? This is Abraham Sitton. This fine chap was a borderline communist, God forbid, took part in World War II and gave me these magnificent eyebrows since he was my grandfather. Now I remember it was back in 2000, my mom calls me and she says, grandpa was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. So I spoke with his doctors and asked, will he be okay? What is the prognosis? And he said it was pretty grim. And then I asked, what about the cure? And he said, not within the next hundred years. So I said, challenge accepted and went and learned more about brain disease. I studied neuroscience and later engineering and joined MIT to create tools to study the brain. Now, what I want to tell you today is that my grandpa's fate is becoming more and more common that it will become a problem at the magnitude of climate change or pandemics, and that we as scientists have failed in providing an understanding of Alzheimer's disease. We failed miserably. But the upside is that the problem can be solved by creating the right technologies to study Alzheimer's. In other words, today we'll discuss why we failed to solve Alzheimer's disease and how we reverse it using technology. Let me explain. Today I'll talk about one, how big a deal is Alzheimer's disease? Two, why we're failing in understanding Alzheimer's disease? And three, how technology can help in understanding and curing Alzheimer's disease. I'll describe three technologies or tools, as I call them, and one experiment we can perform with these tools. First, let's talk a bit about Alzheimer's. Well, Alzheimer's disease is a dementia, a general term for loss of cognitive function, language skills, memory, and problem-solving abilities. Alzheimer's disease is also a neurodegenerative disease, meaning cells in the brain are degenerating. They are simply dying. But is it a wide global issue? To answer this question, let's focus on the top 10 leading causes of death. Worldwide, take a look at the year 2000. The top spot was occupied by cardiovascular diseases, followed by cancers. The number 10 cause of death was dementia. Let's fast forward to 2017. Dementia rose from the 10th spot to the 5th. This is a killer on the rise. By 2050, 110 million people will be affected by dementia. This means that you or a loved one are very likely to cross paths with the disease. It is also a substantial financial burden. Alzheimer's disease and other dementias cost approximately 1% of the world's GDP. Now, just like with my grandpa, being diagnosed with a neurodegenerative disease usually has a grim outlook. But what makes Alzheimer's so deadly? Simply put, when it comes to neurodegenerative diseases, we do not know their causes for the vast majority of them. Why have we failed? Well, there are three main reasons why we don't know the cause of Alzheimer's disease. And they are all related to the way we study the disease. Here are the three plagues that prevent us from understanding and curing Alzheimer's. The first plague is the genetic bias. Alzheimer's disease is not a genetic disease, meaning we do not transmit the disease to our children through our genes. However, one in 200 or 100 Alzheimer's cases comes from a genetic cause. Small mistakes in a person's DNA will cause them to develop this familial Alzheimer's disease. Despite the fact that Alzheimer's is not genetic, the vast majority of research is done in mice wherein these small mistakes are incorporated into the mouse DNA. And scientists study the ensuing effects. So we are studying a non-genetic disease with genetic tools. The second plague is searching for a cure instead of a cause. What do I mean? There is a big push in pharma and in academia to look for a cure. But 
How can we look for a cure when we have no idea about the cause? This is the equivalent of shooting darts without knowing where the bullseye is. You can hit it, but it's very unlikely. The third plague is seeing symptoms as causes. For this third plague, allow me to dive a bit into the biology of Alzheimer's. The brains of people who died of Alzheimer's disease have two major lesions or pathologies. One is mostly, mostly outside of cells called senile plaques that are made of a protein called beta amyloid protein. And the other is mostly, mostly inside cells, which is an abnormal form of a protein called tau that forms tangles inside the cells. The Alzheimer's disease community found these pathologies and has been brawling for three decades about the question, which of these two proteins is causative in Alzheimer's disease? But in fact, we still do not have a clear answer. How do we know? Because most of the 400 failed clinical trials against Alzheimer's disease aim at these two pathologies. I'm not saying that they are not the cause, I'm saying that we need a way to answer if they are the cause or not. Now we get to the third and interesting part. So how do we deal with these plagues? Here's what we do. We create tools that aim at non-genetic Alzheimer's disease, focus on a cause and not just a cure, and look beyond the old ideas about tau and a beta. So what technologies will help us understanding how Alzheimer's disease develops and manifests? Well, simply put, we need to go to the beginning. We need technologies that can study the seeding cellular and molecular events that lead to Alzheimer's disease. How? What kind of technologies? Well, let's fantasize, since they do not fully exist. Let's say that we want to study Alzheimer's disease. A common way is to look into the brains of mice rather than humans. Now, Mice do not get Alzheimer's and also have proven to be a terrible predictor for the success of candidate drugs. We should and will replace mice. But this is a subject of a different talk, so let's use mice as a genetic term for a platform. Here are the tools. The first tool is readout of cell death. We know that cells die in neurodegenerative diseases, so the question we really want to ask is, what kills them? For that, it will be useful to watch them as they die in real time. This way, if we hypothesize that something causes Alzheimer's disease, say chocolate milk, we can expose mice to chocolate milk and see whether it kills cells. But how do we see anything in the brain? A common trick is to make a glass window looking into the mouse brain and use a microscope to image and peer into the brain's biology. But how can we see cell death? Here comes our shiny new tool. These are some of the brain's cells, called neurons. These neurons have a cell body and elongated processes. We can fill these neurons with a specific fluorescent dye. When one of these cells is dying, they become more fluorescent. They blink. So, we give the mice some chocolate milk, we peer into the brains using a microscope, and we see that cells are dying in real time. This will mean that chocolate milk, alas, is causing neural degeneration. The second type of tool is actuating Alzheimer's pathology. So just looking at cells dying can tell us everything about Alzheimer's, since there are many diseases during which cells die. Can we study something that is at least somewhat unique to Alzheimer's? Well, remember that senile plaques exist outside of cells and tau pathology forms tangles inside of neurons? So how do we figure out if tau or beta amyloid are relevant to Alzheimer's disease? We gain control over them. We create them within the brain at the time and area of interest and see whether they are toxic to neurons causing them the so-called degeneration. So how do we gain this control over them? A unique way is to use molecular light switches. What do I mean? We can fill neurons with molecules that are sensitive to light. 
Once the neuron is hit by light, it produces the pathology. In this case, a beta plaque made of beta amyloid protein. And then we can ask, did beta amyloid protein kill the cells expressing it? Did it kill cells in its vicinity? Did it change the connections between neurons? And many other questions relevant to the disease. The third type of tool is reading out Alzheimer's pathology. And how do we monitor these pathologies in the live brain? Well, right now, they're invisible to our microscope, but we want to see them, right? Just like we made these fluorescent indicators for cell death, we can make fluorescent indicators for the pathologies, showing them forming in real time. So, what crucial question can we now ask with the tools I just described? We can ask, does a pathology kill neurons and change behavior? Here is the million dollar experiment. By shining light, we create a pathology using our light switches. Let's say tau pathology. We image the ensuing formation of this tau pathology in the live brain, and we see if it causes cells to die using cell viability indicators. Finally, we test if this experimental manipulation changed animal behavior and produced Alzheimer's-like symptoms, such as learning and memory impairment. <laughs> Did the mouse start forgetting where it left the car keys? Basically, I'm proposing counter disease engineering, solving all neurodegenerative diseases by creating the tools to study them. The tools can come from many disciplines of engineering, bioengineering, chemical engineering, genetic engineering, electrical engineering, to name a few. We can create a plethora of tools. We should build light switches for cell pathology. We should engineer readout strategies for cell viability or death. We should create tiny devices that monitor cellular health. And we should find ways to study Alzheimer's disease non-invasively in humans rather than mice. And the list goes on. I neglected a lot here. But the key to solving diseases is engineering tools. We are as smart as the technologies we make or not. So how does creating the tools relate to you? How does it relate to us? First, I think we should all realize that Alzheimer's disease is here to stay unless we do anything about it. It is increasingly becoming a leading cause of death. Let's treat this looming threat now perhaps a bit better than we treated climate change or pandemics? If you're a policymaker or a member of the National Institute of Health, I think it's time for a diseased brain initiative. How about a war on Alzheimer's? If you're a part of a foundation or a philanthropy group, please also fund alternative hypothesis, not just the well-visited path. Please fund the riskier stuff, since the answer might be there too. If you're a scientist, let's do this. We live in an exciting time where we have the biological engineering magic wands at our fingertips, and we just need to get going and create the tools. Go wild, but remember the goal. If you belong to the pharma industry, perhaps search also for a cause, not just for a cure. Maybe the cure will present itself. Once we know the causes of Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, ALS, CTE, and many other diseases, we will be able to treat and even reverse them at a snippet of the time and a fraction of the cost it took before. I'm talking millions of dollars rather than trillions, 10 years rather than a century. So don't believe those who tell you that understanding dementia cannot be achieved in your lifetime. We can solve this. We only need to get to work. Thank you.